But, now, Alexander III was an absolute giant of a man, as well as commissioning his royal yacht, the Standard. He was, in essence, very peasant-like, autocratic, immensely strong, given to worldly pleasures, but also confident in himself. He knew what he wanted. Russia was seen by all as his personal domain. It's funny, you know, every single one of these Russian kings was, or emperors, was really the polar opposite of the predecessor. In Alexander I, in Napoleon's time, he was seen as the first gentleman of Europe, Europe aristocratic, chivalrous. In his successor, Alexander II, it was someone with liberal sentiments who unfortunately was assassinated for not spinning along the reform quickly enough. This led to Alexander III, the man that built this great yacht. He was a man who was autocratic, strong. He was uh, of, a, of a gigantic size. He could rip apart a deck of cards with his bare hands. Once, when speaking to the Austrian ambassador, when the Austrian ambassador threatened, uh, jokingly threatened to send over some army corps units to, uh, against Russia, he picked up a silver fork, twisted it into a knot, and threw it into the fire and said, that is what I will do with your armies. He held that a strong military is the very best way to protect peace, and there were no major wars in his time in Europe. He forged an alliance with France. He worried over his naive, stupid, and foolish and childish son, Nicholas II. And he worried that he would not be able to keep control or keep ownership of the empire. Now, let's look at the personal yacht, the standard of both Alexander III and Nicholas II, his successor. So what can we say about this fabulous Russian yacht, the Standard? It was finished two years after the death of Alexander III from kidney disease, finally entering service in 1896 after being launched in 1895. Now, this yacht, built to a sleek modern design with Art Nouveau decorative features on its hull, was fitted out with ornate fixtures. It had mahogany panelling. It had crystal chandeliers. It was literally a floating palace for the imperial family. And it was manned by essentially the Russian Royal Navy. And in 1907, the ship actually ran aground on a rock off the Finnish coast. It was damaged but did not sink and it was repaired and soon returned to service. Now, after the revolution, unfortunately, this became the Soviet mine layer, Marty. One of the mines it laid uh, actually sunk the German submarine chaser, chaser the Gustav Kroner, on the 1st of August, 1941. And the ship has the dubious, I guess, the, 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 the dubious uh, distinction of being the ship where the Russian royal family actually heard about the, uh, the assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand while they were holidaying, as they did, on the Baltic Sea in, on, in the summer of 1914, which, of course, kicked off World War I. And, of course, for them, it might have been, you know, something sad, and, but they didn't know that this, this would kick off events which would end the Russian Empire and end all use by them, obviously, of the standard yacht. Now, in 1909, a Fabergé egg was commissioned uh, by the Tsar for his wife, Alexandra Fyodorovna, and it's just uh, a beautiful um, jeweled egg. It looks absolutely sensational. It's a hollowed out rock crystal egg mounted horizontally 
with a gold band with inlaid leaves of green enamel and small diamonds marking the separation point between upper and lower halves. And it bears the inscription, Standart 1909. And it's got a crowned lapis lazuli eagle perched on either side of the egg and a large pear-shaped pearl hangs from each. In, in addition, two lapis lazuli dolphins with intertwined tails. And of course, this was presented, this was a gift uh, presented by Nicholas to his wife. The yacht was used for private dinners, private parties. It was used for cruising around. We see Nicholas seated at a private dinner. Uh, just, just wonderful. And those are bygone days uh, that will never return. 